Nice and here on Now Spinning Magazine with episode 13 of the Jethro Tall Deluxe Series Unboxing Videos. And this is the last one for now. And it is A, not seen as one of Jethro Tull's finest albums at the time, probably not even now, but it was still given this treatment, which gives us the confidence to know that somewhere in the future, if I can find it, we know that Broadsword and the Beast will be on its way. Anyway, enough of that. Let's dive in and I'll have a look at A. And A is next. And this one was different for the 2003 editions. In fact, this was 2004 because it was a two disc set. And there was a reason for that. And this is the reason why I went for it. Um, as my, my copy here disintegrates. Bear with me. Um, and the reason for that is it came with the copy of the VHS video at the time called Slipstream. Now this album at the time was not seen as one of their best, but again, as you'll see as we go through the big box, they got into character, but that was the reason why a lot of people wanted to buy this, and it was Slipstream, the video. So this was a CD and DVD set that included that and the original album. Anyway, this is what you're here for. Now, a lot of people thought that Stephen Wilson would stop once he got to this, uh, or even before he got to this, and I'm so glad he didn't. This is the La Mode 40th Anniversary Edition, the 1980 album with associated tracks, Fall November 1980 LA Sports Arena Concert, and Slipstream Video, all remixed by Stephen Wilson in stereo on 5.1. And again, they have not pulled back thinking, well, it wasn't one that did that well. It's a 104 page book in this um you know you've got martin barr david pegg eddie, eddie jobson great violinist and, and a musician and you've got you know one two three cds and two three dvds this is huge and this one is probably the cheapest one out there on the market at the moment so we're on to three discs before we get to the first page of the book and again, we've got all the tracks, the live concert, two parts, all being remixed. And here we go. And we're into the detail of the album with Eddie Jobson. He talks about how he came to be in the band after disbanding in the UK in 1980. And of course, was this really going to be a Jethro Tull album? Or was it going to be a solo album? Then the powers of B said, yes, it is Tull. And he'd already surrounded himself by different musicians. But just like before, they got themselves into character and off they went. Creating an album that was of the time. Um, you know, the sound, the instrumentation, they were pushing around. But look again, it's time for a new look. It's time for a new image. Let's do it. The, the level of enthusiasm um, for Ian and the lads is just fantastic, isn't it? You know, different haircuts different style it's 1980s we're entering a new decade and they've just embraced it and thought yep we can do that no problem martin barr um eddie jobson with his transparent violin that should have taken off if you ask me um absolutely brilliant look at the detail this is a period where musicologists will talk about stand up and aqualung and you might think this is a lesser known period of the tall canon but now you've got a hundred odd page book that will tell you everything you need to know about this period. And all the lyrics are there. Words with a drummer. It's a great, look, I'm flicking through this quite quickly. And then we've got Stephen Wilson talking about mixing the album, what it was like, changing, there's a fact of changing direction, original credits and this is the tour program from the time which there's Dave Pegg obviously was part of Fairports great pictures so this is the tour program from the time Eddie Jobson it's great that they've included that uh, as well and all the adverts are the entire thing picture there with ACDC because this, this is about now the, the video Slipstream, which is when Slipstream came out, for those that you might not know, it was the first 
VHS music video apart from Deep Purple's California Jam that was made available. It was and it was about forty pounds at the time, which is a week's wages back in nineteen eighty. And it was absolutely superb. And the fact that you've got it here, there it is. Look, and this is superb. It's worth getting it for this. I have always loved that video. I really have. And then we've got the tour dates, and then the last three discs, and that is A. So that's A, the Le Monde edition. Still a massive book, loads of discs, loads of attention to detail, and a worthy partner in this entire Jethro Tull series of fantastic sets. What a journey it has been. I just want to touch on one thing when people go, it doesn't sound like Jethro at all, whatever. You have to try and remember what it was like when the music business was different to what it is now. Now, bands can just think, I do, I do black metal and this is what I wear and this is what I'm going to wear. So that's it. This is who I am, whatever. Then bands were very their eyes and ears were tuned in to what was going on around them. Um, there's a reason why Kiss did the grunge album and Def Leppard did slang in the 90s, because they were, they were keeping an eye on what was going on around them. May not, was it successful? But remember the late 60s, a lot of bands, the mid-60s, a lot of bands were, were pop combos. They were doing pop music. And then the people started to see that people were doing longer tracks and albums were becoming more popular and people were turning things up. And, you know, The Who changed into a rock band. Lots of bands started to look around them and see what was happening and changed accordingly. Lots of bands that started off as psychedelic pop became rock bands or headed towards heavy metal. Um, like Purple, they changed their skin, you know, from Mark 1 to Mark 2. So what the reason I'm saying that is that bands changed. So some of oh, this doesn't sound like stand-up. Well, why would it? Stand-up was 1969. Now we're in 1980, the start of the 80s synthesizers, keyboards, different thing, and musicians embraced what was around them. So to me, it's still Jethro Tull, just the same as I'm jumping around a bit, but who knows, there may be deduction for Crest of an A, for instance. Woods and Branches. I've been playing so much Jethro Tull. Um, and they just morphed, but still kept their identity. But again, as I said when I was unboxing it, the real jewel in the crown for this set which is the most the cheapest one to get at the moment you can still get this for about 20 pounds 20 pounds for a 104 page booklet and six discs dvds 5.1 mix christ jump up and get it is the video slipstream a time capsule um that's came out the same time as deep purple's um california jam VHS. I remember buying the Deep Purple one for 40 odd quid. I had to sign a piece of paper in HMV in case I tried to bring it back. It was so expensive. My wages were £68 a week and I spent 40 quid on a tape. And it's in here and it's superb. Uh, it really, really is. So I, I would get it for that. But to have it as part of this series, it just makes sense. It really, really does. And I'll sum up. Um, by saying, and I've said throughout this, but I'm saying this now for the record companies or anyone else who's watching it and for future fans and subscribers of Now Spinning Magazine. This, to me, and I buy a lot of stuff and a lot of people write to me. Um, the website has nearly 80,000 visitors a month. We've got a YouTube, well, obviously got the YouTube channel, hi. Um, we've got the Facebook community. Um, there's thousands of people connected to, to, this, this, to this venture. And everybody constantly keeps telling me that this is the best format for reissues of albums. I know Marillion have gone down this route, good for them. Um, and there's been a few others, but the, the level of detail is unsurpassed. Um, obviously, Ian Anderson must be a fantastic archivist and he's realised that there's, there's money in them, their hills, um, but not so much that, but the fact his fans adore this level of detail. You want to know about the string quartet that played on what? Warchild? Yes. You want to know who sang backing vocals? Maddie, Qua Maddie Qua um, Pryor on, um, on Heavy Horse? Yes. What else has she done? You want to know about um, ex-members of Jethro Tull and what their discography is and what they went on to do afterwards? Yes. 
It's all in these sets and it, 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 they just fit on the shelves. They don't fall over next to something else. It's the wrong size. It's been consistent. Um, and again, it, uh, you know, I've seen other box sets where the next one comes out and it's small or whatever. No, not with these. It has been an absolute pleasure to do these videos. I know I've not gone into the detail of the tracks and what I think of them. I might do separate Jethro Tall videos just going through track by track analysis at another time. But I just wanted to share with you what these sets were like so that if you're collectors, you can go off and try and find them on Discogs or um, eBay and you know what it is that you're getting. And as I said, I shall return to this series. All of these videos are going to be part of a playlist. So you'll be able to play one and just go all the way through to the end. Um, there is an extra one on Anaqualong, which has been tagged on because I did it earlier. So they'll all be there and they'll all be added to the website as well. And the next one I shall do, hopefully, will be Broadsword and the Beast. And won't that be exciting? Because that's another one of my favourite Jethro Tull albums. I've been playing so much Jethro Tull. I don't want to hold you up, everybody. But, you know, there is so much stuff to explore after this as well. Just such a fantastic band. So thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for everyone for your comments during this series and all, all your support. It means absolutely everything to me. And thank you especially to all my patrons. And that includes Yogi, Clive, Chris and Andy and everyone else who's recently come on board. Remember, music is the healer. Limit the amount of news you watch. Keep spinning those records, keep spinning those discs and I shall see you on my next video.